Hello there, my name is Japheth Mast, and welcome to the Make Life Awesome podcast. I'm the ex Amish photographer with the funny name and the crazy hair, but trust me, there's a whole lot more to me than just that. In this podcast, I really hope to show you my heart more than what's in my head, because that's where all the really beautiful stuff is. I'm so glad you're here. Let's jump in to learning together what it looks like to make life awesome. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the podcast. In this episode, I have a fun and deep and vulnerable conversation with Mr. Jariah Miller. Um, I can't wait for you to listen. We talk about overcoming weaknesses and the importance of feedback and input from mentors. We talk about uh, loving and accepting yourself. We talk about being willing to, to put in the work to, to be honest with yourself and then to go at, to, and work on yourself. And overall, it's just really good. We cover a lot of ground. Um, it's vulnerable. It's lighthearted. It's great. So enjoy. Hey, podcast family. I'm back, back with episode number three. And today, my guest, um, besides us sharing similar odd slash unique names, um, he happens to be my cousin. Uh, welcome, Jariah Miller, on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Japheth. means a lot. Yeah. Uh, we are first cousins, as as I said. And it's funny. So, we grew up together in the same community in Libby, Montana. And really, we're best friends. We did everything together. We hung out together. We had fun. We invented things together. We just... We just mm-hmm. did a lot of life together, airsoft fights, uh, yeah. sleepovers. <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah. fun. Um, but then played in the woods. So around 2010 or 2011, my family moved away from Montana. So we haven't lived in the same place for about eight years. But we're still really connected and um, still very good friends. So I'm excited for this. Actually, about two two years ago, we were actually planning on starting a podcast together. It was going to be called. Motivation Minute, yeah. and that didn't end up happening, but now Jariah <laughs> has started a podcast with his friend Spencer, and it's called Motivation yeah. Minute, and so everyone go listen to that. They uh, read books and share what they learn uh, from the books, and it's kind of um, a podcast, yeah. so you, you don't go need subscribe. to read everything. Yeah. Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe. <laughs> so, Jariah, can you give us... Cool. A, just a couple minutes of who you are, uh, a little bit of your story, and anything else you want to share in there. Yeah, I'll just give a, I guess, um, a quick overview of, of kind of my the way I grew up and where I'm at today, kind of. So, yeah, first of all, yeah, I grew up Amish. Um, we lived right next to Japheth, along with a bunch of my other cousins, and you know, yeah, it was it was what you think about when you think of a traditional Amish um, community. You know, very. Very strict, a closed group, kind of in a way, uh, tight knit. You know, you just pretty much knew your relatives and your close family. You know, once in a while you'd see some people that weren't from like your little tribe, <laughs> but it was you know, it was interesting. Um, you know, it's like it's it's basically if you were go to back if you were to go back two hundred years, that's how people lived back then. You know, but I got a little bit older. My family started changing. The whole community started slowly um, opening up. They started driving cars and. And my parents were very open, so, you know, I was lucky enough to start to get exposed to other people, and, you know, and even though I was secluded, I, I never felt that way, I never felt, like, controlled. I know other people did, but I never felt like um, like this was something that I was so different from the world in a bad way. I was kind of proud of it, and it's a funny story. <laughs> um, uh, my Aunt Julia bought me these shirts when we were starting to dress different clothes, <laughs> and, um and they were just like these pl- plaid, like conservative shirts, and I wouldn't, I didn't want to wear them. I was like, they're not Amish enough. <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing to think about now, but you know, because for us that was like too edgy. We were used to just the plain, yeah, dress style, just plain pl- shirts. Anyway, so that, so I always, yeah, said, homemade. That's kind of how I felt growing homemade, up. Homemade, homemade yeah. clothes. Anyway, so that's kind of how I felt. Um, as I got older, I definitely started developing a lot of insecurities and stuff. But moving on, I um, today I'd say I'm I'm pretty grateful for the way I was raised. I would say in a lot of ways it was privileged compared to the, 
if you look at overall society in America, it was pretty privileged. Uh, I had great parents. You know, I got to experience a different type of lifestyle. You know, yeah, we didn't watch movies. We didn't have. Tell them how old you are and uh, how big your family is. I'm 22 right now, and I have uh, six siblings. Or, so there's six siblings in our family total. And then there's, yeah, then there's um, a lot of cousins, <laughs> a lot of a lot of uh, people that are closely related. Um, many, many. So this was so this so this was. Um, it was about I was like ten or eleven when we started to leave that Amish culture, and then so basically, a few a few years ago, I'd say it was about five years ago. Um, I was eighteen. Um, I I started to develop this drive for like business and. You know, I'd always, we'd always been super creative. I remember me and Japheth, we used to always, you know, build stuff, invent stuff. We were always doing fun things. And I remember we even, we even like sold, um, we'd sell like candy and lemonade and stuff and make some money. And I was, I'm kind of the entrepreneurial, the classical like entrepreneurial type of personality in a lot of ways. But, um, so I, I wanted to start my business really bad. Um, you know, I started like, you know, watching just tons of, of online content, YouTube videos and, and books and things like that. And, and I ended up doing it. So I ended up starting the business. That, that was about four years ago. And it's just grown slowly over the years. Been, I've been really blessed to be where I'm at now. So I'm, I'm very passionate about business. And uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. Just a brief summary of, of what my life has been like up to this point. Yeah. Uh, when did you start uh, your your business. Why don't you tell them just a couple seconds about what that is? Right. Uh, I used to do YouTube videos. I used to build RC planes, like remote control airplanes, and I made some videos on how to build the planes, um, tutorials and stuff. And then, it, then I so that was one. And I remembered that you actually you were the one that gave me the idea to do that as a business because I think I messaged you like, I'm not. I want to do a business, but I'm not sure what I want to do. And you were like. <laughs> why don't you do your YouTube? You know, you were already doing that. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea, you know? <laughs> so I so I really focused on YouTube and that was going to be my thing. I was going to build, you know, a successful YouTube channel. So I spent a lot of money on cameras, lights. I thought I had to make everything perfect, you know, to make sure everything just looked perfect from the outside or whatever. And basically it was too much. I burned out. It w- I wasn't able to be consistent because I was trying to do it too well. And I learned a lot of a lot of lessons from that from that miniature business. Um, I, but I was doing videos and creating kind of professional videos. So I decided I could do that for other people as well. So I started off making videos for friends and family, um, professionally, you know, like edited videos. I took some classes on editing and, and, I uh, got some better equipment just slowly. And, and, um, that's the direction I've taken the last three years with the business is just creating videos for businesses and for, um, uh, for like advertising videos and just slowly getting better over time. So yeah, it's been um it's been a fun journey. With that, been super hard. I've learned the lessons I've learned it from it are invaluable, and I w- I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, so, you were what what nineteen twenty when you kind of officially launched the business. I was nineteen, yeah, when officially started. My dad helped me do the the legal stuff, and so I'm twenty two now, yeah. almost twenty three. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was always always intrigued and inspired by. Just the way like your brain worked, you were always so inventive, so curious, always like starting new things and trying all these these different kind of ex- experiments. You would build RC planes. You were really passionate about that, and I think one day you will still will get your pilot's license. I know that's been a dream of yours. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Wh- why you are that way, and and where it's taken you? Okay, um, honestly looking back and and everything I think you know because I'm becoming more aware of my my strengths and my weaknesses and and looking back I think I have the ability to well I'm very creative I can see new ideas all over the place to a fault um (laughs) like shiny objects syndrome but um and I I also have (laughs) the ability to to see what people want and figure out you know figure out what would be the best solution for them um, I, you know, I, I look at what, what does somebody want? How do I fix their problem? Um, how do I, and that's what business is, honestly, is solving somebody's problem and, and giving them what they want, you know, and then, then they'll pay you for it. So that, I think that, that ability to always be thinking externally of what does this person want? What does that person want has helped me to 
in business, you know, to be able to think of ideas. Now to actually do those things then, <laughs> to, to stay disciplined enough to actually then fulfill that. And, and there's a million obstacles or the things that I had to learn to, uh, you know, to get over that myself of not being disciplined, not, you know, being so chaotic and, <laughs> and unorganized or whatever. But I'd say that um, that's part of my creativity is, is seeing that. And, you know, I, I'm, that's, that I would say those are my, some of my strengths. But as I was saying in the last year, uh, sorry, in the last few years, I've started to become aware of some of my, my strengths and weaknesses. And some of it was because, mostly because of some people that I ran into, some, some mentors actually, a few different people, which I won't mention their names, but just some people that were very, um, were able to be honest with me and that gave me some feedback about some things. The first thing I discovered is that they were telling me that I care too much about what people think. And I kind of knew that even a few years ago. And I was, but it was kind of like a big realization at that time. I was like, wow, I mean, that's, you know, I didn't know that, that I care too much what people think. But so that was kind of the first realization. And then I started studying personality things, some, some personality types in the last, been very interested in that. I studied the, um, like the Enneagram, Myers Briggs, Redemptive Gifts, a couple other ones. And for me, they've been, they've been huge. Um, and one of my mentors helped me realize this, that, you know, it's just a tool though. It's just a tool to help you understand things. It's not a solution. So, so it's just a, they're just a tool and they've been incredibly revealing to me. I think a lot of people don't see the value in them or they will study them as a hobby for a little bit and then they'll kind of forget about it or they'll think, oh, this is a cool little neat hobby, you know, oh, this person's that fun type and this person's that type and they don't, um, and you can go way beyond that. I know some, some, a pastor friend of mine, um, who, who is into the redemptive gifts and they use it consistently in their life and, and it helps them know what people, you know, know why does this person operate this way? You know, it helps you know your own fears, your own strengths, weaknesses, other people's. And so I think it's a very useful tool. Um, anyway, I've mostly studied, uh, like the Myers Briggs version, which, and there's some other types. Some, um, I think they're all generally had like the same basic principles though. I think they're all good in, in their own way. Um, but anyway, so I've been using them as a way to really know where are my weaknesses and how can I actually, actually like make progress? Because a lot, I think for most of us, we don't see our own weaknesses or strengths. We don't know, we think we know our, ourselves, but we don't. That's why we're kid, kids and teenagers are the classic example of just, they just, they go around just chaos. They don't know things. Then they have to have the the adult come in, and and the, and the adults can see their their problems, but they don't. We don't see our own problems, and it's you know as as you mature in life, you start to see your own strengths and weaknesses. But um, so having other people actually point them out to me has been big. But I think naturally we are unaware. I think to a degree we're we all have a skewed view of ourselves. We don't actually see our. If we saw our own weaknesses then there'd be no problems. Like, obviously, but, you know, but we don't see our own problems. Other people can see them. Like, we can see our friends' problems. We can see our parents' problems. And it's like they don't really see them themselves, which means that they see our, our problems when we don't see them. And so knowing that, first being aware that, and my mentors helped me understand some of this as well, but that we are, un- we're like unconscious. We don't realize... And sometimes we don't want to realize it because we're stubborn or whatever. We don't want to listen. We don't see our own weaknesses and strengths. So that's the first thing. <clears throat> then if you can take that approach, you can, and here's what happens when most people take personality tests is that they will, they've been shown, there's been plenty of studies that have been done that show that people will, will generally, when they take a personality test themselves and it's just them taking it, they will type themselves upside down or backwards. They'll be way <laughs> off. And then... Uh, like the same, the pastor friend of mine, he said that generally what they do when they type people is they have a group of people of probably about six or seven people that know that know the person, whether they're, you know, family members or, or associates, and they all they come together as a group and everybody shares their opinion of what they think this person's type is and strengths and weaknesses. Mm. And that's the most, that's the most, a- that's the most accurate way to, to, to discover 
And it's, it's interesting that we almost never have those conversations where you get a 360 degree view of yourself. And I know you did this, like you sent a while ago, you sent an email to me and, pro, and I think to some other people just uh, asking for us to identify what we think are your strengths and weaknesses, right? Oh, and you've been yeah. very intentional in that, right? You've been very intentional in that area, which has been inspiring actually to me, but of intentionally seeking out mentors and like, I know you, you like, have like met and go off to eat with um, people to speak into your life. So that has been huge in that area. I think most people don't do that. We don't look for it. We do, it's hard because they give us things we don't want to hear. They they're on, If they're honest with us, it generally hurts when people are honest with us. And I think part of that reason is because we're unaware. We're like, what? I'm really like that? Um, and maybe deep down we know, but we don't want to hear it. Like, So for me... Going back um, to what I said earlier, I, I started realizing that that was one of my biggest weaknesses was caring what other people think, which like I, we said earlier, like I think that's also a strength. Everything's I think is strength and a weakness, but you know, being able to see what other people want and being able to um, be able to figure out solutions to, to solve other people's needs, that's great. Um, I'm actually on the Enneagram, I'm the, the two, I believe, where... Um, where it's a lot about my needs are getting are getting validation from other people or caring what other people um, caring too much what other people want, always thinking about what other people need. It doesn't mean I'm a caring. It doesn't mean I'm this nice caring person. What I've learned is that doing that for me, um, when I because I always am thinking about and caring about other people's and what they want too much, I leave a void for myself to where. I'll, I'll go into these once in a while. All my feelings will come out at random awkward times and it'll be very uncomfortable and, and I won't know what I'm feeling. So it's like it, it leaves these voids which come out in, at awkward times and is very unhealthy for, in relationships in a lot of different ways. So it's, in, it's interesting that I've, that I've started to discover that. So... I think I talked to you a while ago, and I think you had actually um, told me about the enneagram and how you think that I, that my type would be more like with the on the two, the type two of the enneagram, which I've I've since then studied it a little bit, and I'd say it definitely, definitely is that. You can look at all the personality stuff um, as a, and use it as a good tool, but ultimately, you know, I think it's it's um, it just it goes to what do you want to do with that? You know, am I willing? Once I see that, so once I see that, that you know, these are my weaknesses. How do I? How, how can I work on that? And that's been the big thing for me is, you know, okay, trying to identify that. Can I look back at my life and see, okay, when I've done things in the past, what have the motivations been of those? And it's kind of scary sometimes to think of that and look back and try to be aware, like, whoa. The, you know, the reason I started my business or the reason I did this or that was for completely different motivations than what I thought, and I wasn't aware of them at the time. And, you know, I can talk a little bit about that. Like, when I started my business, that was, it wasn't starting the business that was hard for me or thinking of ideas or, or any of that stuff. The, um, what was hard was, you know, growing up in a, in a kind of a tight community in a family business and, being kind of being expected to you know work in the family business and which is normal that's what any group will do but but I you know I, I just I desperately wanted to do my own thing and stuff like that and what was holding me back for a long time was what other people thought and honestly I don't think I could have done it if, if my dad wasn't so supportive my, you know my dad was very supportive um, you know but and it was so it wasn't really him but it was other people and and that I was I was afraid of what they were going to think of me of of um, you know, starting my own thing. Oh, you know, he's going against everything, and and looking back, it wasn't a big deal, that big of a deal. But in the in the moment, it felt just cripplingly. You know, I was in so much fear of what my different various people in my family and people thought. And the honestly, it what they didn't. I've t you know since talking to some people, they didn't have those you know deep judgments or whatever that I was thinking they might have at the time. It was myself. It was me having that fear of what other people thought. Um, but, 
you know, I, I ended up working through that and, you know, I ended up working through that, that fear and it, and it was good. And I've learned so much from doing, just from doing that. And we all have areas in our life where we have these weaknesses different for different people. But for me, it was that need for validation. But I think once you're honest with yourself about some of your things and you, and you would spend time looking at yourself and, and listening to feedback and intentionally get feedback from different people in your life, you'd be surprised at, at your own weaknesses and strengths. But yeah, yeah, this that actually ties perfectly into kind of where I was wanting to go next in the conversation. Uh, you led perfectly into it, but it's a, yeah, this whole thing of of identity, identity, and knowing who we are. Um, and what you were talking about with the people pleasing and, you know, when we, when we try to please people, we were performing for their, their validation or their affirmation mm-hmm. or their compliments. Yep. Um, and it's really putting on a mask when we're doing that, we're being someone else. We're being someone that we're not, we're being someone that we think they want us to be. Um, and and that's right. dishonest with ourselves. You were talking about we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with our emotions. We have to be honest in our communication. And we have to be we have to be true to ourselves. And that that takes wow. you know a lot of courage to to be true to yourself and to to stand up for who for who you are and not um, run yourself over because that's probably more common right. than being run over by other people, you know? Do you want to elaborate on agree. that? So true. Well, just the last part you mentioned, running ourselves over, I think that is so true that pretty much, you know, I'll give an example of, you know, a lot of, some friends I know and people will say that, you know, I, you know, my parents did this wrong or that wrong or I had a bad upbringing and some people did legitimately have horrible, you know, parents and upbringings. I don't want to diminish that, but I'd say for the average person and and for me and some some people that I know that have complained about this, they had privileged upbringings. <laughs> and but they're still blaming their parents and their upbringing for their problems. And honestly, if if you do that, you know, or say somebody else ran me over, you're giving up the responsibility. And so you can't get better if you do that. That's just one example of, of avoiding responsibility. But I have to actually take responsibility myself and say, you know, what, my, whatever, for whatever reason I have these weaknesses, whether they're my personality or, 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 or nurture, you know, upbringing, I have to take responsibility to fix them and be honest with myself about them. And, you know, I still don't do that most of the time. But I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it now at this point in my life of my weaknesses and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I know that I, that that the answer is to take responsibility and then be honest with yourself and intentionally try to get better slowly over time. And so that's kind of where I'm at with that. But yeah, why don't we talk a little bit about or because I know you have a lot of insight in this area of of acceptance of um of of knowing your identity or, or knowing your own value, you know, of getting your identity from God, you know, not other people or and being totally okay with yourself and loving yourself. How has that, how's that been for you, or what's some advice you have on that? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm on a, I'm on a journey, and it's, it's a journey that mm-hmm. I don't think ever ends in in learning just how to accept yourself. But yeah, so often we seek external validation, validation from from other people, uh, validation from what we do. And validation, the difference between validation and affirmation, let me just make that distinction. Validation is saying, like, you are good. Affirmation is saying, like, hey, I like this thing that you did. So affirmation deals with identity, Mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, validation deals with identity, and and affirmation just is is more shallow. We have a need for, for affirmation from people mm. but not a need for validation right. from from people and so and exactly. i was just thinking about this this morning until we can learn to love and accept ourselves we will never believe all the nice things that other people say about us 
we'll never believe that we're good enough if we if we can't um, receive it for ourselves from from God. If we if we don't actually get that in our hearts, when when people do try to love us, try to try to give us affirmation, it just kind of bounces off, like there's a wall over our hearts, and that that those compliments just bounce off, and it's like it's just empty, and it's honestly frustrating. Sometimes it can be frustrating when you try to compliment someone and it they just can't receive it because there's this this wall up. That's very interesting. Okay, so what you said is exactly true there about how we, we until we believe it ourselves, we will never believe it from other people. And that's what I've realized that I do so many times and, and I've seen some of my friends who do this where someone will give them a compliment or something and they'll say, oh, no, no, it's, well, this happened or this, they'll explain a reason because of this, that's why I'm good at this or, you know, or oh, it was really God or it was really this other friend that helped me do this or they'll always like push it off. But then... Uh, and I do that sometimes too. And then I'll, but then I'll go like immediately after that, go look for more validation or say things to, to try to get validation from them. And then as soon as they give it to me, I'll shove it off. And I've, I remember growing up, I, I would do this. I would say when something wasn't quite fair or something, I would say, Hey, that's not fair. You know, I want some too. Or, um, and it was legitimately, I was trying to make it more fair for everybody, including myself. And then when they would finally give in and say, okay, fine, let's make it fair, I would say, oh, no, never mind, you know. And then I remember people telling me about that. My Some of my friends, like my, my brother would say, you know, why do you do that? You know, you always say you try to make it even and then you don't even want it after all because I felt bad for getting, for receiving something. And I think I I feel bad. It's It comes from the people who struggle with the need for validation, which we all do to an extent probably, but, you know, there's this always this uh, this need that can never be filled because we're constantly wanting people to say things good things about us or we're wanting the validation we're asking we're putting the responsibility to them to tell us how we are but that's never going to be enough it's that that can never fulfill you you have to discover who you are for your for yourself you know i can i can't be my own man if i have to always do things for for other people and I have to ask them like I've done things like when someone asks me a question I'll ping it right back oh well what do you think or oh well according to this blah 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 you know and I won't actually answer the question for myself with what I believe because I'm very it's very awkward for me to do that sometimes you know and and I've only you know this is stuff that I've that's kind of been I haven't really discovered until recently for me and you know I don't very often talk about these things, you know, this, it is vulnerable for me to, to open up with that. Um, yeah. you know, I could, I could share one more example of, of, um, how this has kind of played out in my life of, I started talking about it earlier, but some relation, a few friends of mine that, um, actually one friend specifically more than the others, but basically, you know, we, we start, we got along well at first and some friends that I, that I had known for a few years, and they would say, you know, would you want to hang out? Or they would come over to our house and, and they wanted to hang out and stuff. And, and I'd be, yeah, sure, let's hang out, even though I didn't really feel like it. Now, sometimes you need to be nice to people, even if you don't feel like it. But it's a continual problem for me where I'll, I'll say yes to things, even if I don't absolutely don't want to do it all the time. Beca- not because I know it's the right thing, but because I'm afraid of what they'll think of me wow. if I say no. Wow. And I'm, I'm afraid. I'm, af- I'm afraid to disappoint them. So they ask me to do something, or ask me if they if they want to hang out. And if I feel like it's going to make them feel good, I'll say yeah, sure. And so I'd go hang out with them, or I'd I'd give you know. And then meanwhile, I'm building up this li- just a tiny bit of resentment because I didn't really want to. And then and then I but I didn't communicate it with them, and I wasn't aware of it for myself. And then over time, I keep doing that. It it builds up more and more. And and then when I had to tell them how I finally felt. It was like a big shock, like, whoa, in their mind, I just all of a sudden had cut off the relationship. Well, me, but it, for me, it had been building up for so long, and I, but I hadn't been honest about it, and I hadn't been communicating it. And so that was just so unhealthy and destructive on my part to do that looking back. In, in the moment, I, I didn't know it because I wasn't aware of what I was feeling, you know, because I was only thinking about the other person. I was only thinking, oh, what can I do to make them feel good? And that is selfish because you're ignoring your own needs, which will build up, and it'll that can that can destroy relationships. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people is 
they don't. Uh, and we all know this, you know, if you're not vulnerable and you're not open and honest, continually communicating, you build up things and then it all comes out in the wrong ways and yeah, that's how relationships end. But man, um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's really good, bro. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for, for opening yourself up and, and being vulnerable and sharing a piece of, of you with us today. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up. Uh, I got a few questions for you at the end, but here's kind of what, what I took away from this conversation. There's a lot more, but I made a few notes here. Uh, number one, surround yourself with people who will, will tell you the truth, who, but who will love you and love you enough to tell you the truth. Um, community is so vital. And we are created for, for connection. A uh, number true. It's okay to be yourself. Let go of what you think people want you to be and just be true to who you are, true to, to who God yeah. created you to be. Uh, yeah. Number three. Amen. Yep. Number three, be honest with yourself. Don't, don't lie to yourself. Don't pretend, um, that you're feeling one thing when you're really feeling, feeling another. It's okay. Emotions um, aren't as scary as we sometimes think they are. And it's okay to feel. Number four, it's okay to say no. Like in relationships, it's okay to love yes. to be, be kind to yourself and to say no. In, in situations where you just don't have the capacity to go hang out with that friend group today or you're being asked to do something that that you know violates um your heart and your truth and lastly um it's okay to to be awesome it's okay to inspire it's okay to to do things at a, at a young age that most people honestly don't do or are too scared to do and it's okay to just take risks and start things even when you don't know that you'll finish them but it that's that's yeah. okay. So that's a really good conversation. Yes. Um, couple, I love that. Couple last questions. Can you share two or three um, books you've read or things you've watched or listened to, in the, maybe in the past year that have just really inspired you? One of the books I read recently was Extreme Ownership, um, written by a Navy SEAL. I can't remember his name, <laughs> but um, and it's just about. It's just about taking how in order to to get better and to grow and to do anything, you have to take full responsibility. Um, I also like the Gary V podcast or some of his YouTube videos. He talks a lot just because it's resonated with me. He's a little bit too um, brash for some people, but he um, talks a lot about how not caring what people think and how that's been a big struggle for him. He talks about it a lot. And I think if someone talks about something a lot like I just have then it's a big problem for them you know and one thing I'll say is like I've heard people say oh I don't care what people think of me you know arrogantly or something those are the people that care the most if you think like if you're like I don't care about about what people think of me that means you probably do if you have to even say that and anyway so Gary Vee has resonated with me a lot on that don't do things out of the motivation of what other people will think of it that's sometimes okay, but most of the time you should do what is true to yourself first and what you believe first, then go consider other people's opinions, not the other way around. And to end this, uh, if you had to say something to your 18-year-old self, if you could sit down with him and have like a five-minute conversation or a two-minute conversation, what would you tell him? Hmm. Yeah, I would... It's kind of along the lines of what I just said, but a different couple things. Um, you you know, I would tell me <laughs> myself at 18 that I need to to actually stop worrying about what other people think of me and spend time intentionally by myself processing or asking God or just me, um, you know, processing what are my feelings how do I feel about this relationship or that relationship? How do I feel about this? What do I want to do? So I actually know what I want. And then I can factor in other people's opinions. Um, and But now that's not saying that you shouldn't take advice from mentors. You absolutely need some people to speak into your life. But I would have told myself back then that I 
have to stop worrying. It's not as big of it's not. It's okay if somebody is disappointed in me. It's okay if somebody disagrees with me. It's okay if somebody、um, smarter disagrees with me. I can still have my own opinion. I don't have to go along with with、um, someone else's opinion just because I think it's smarter. I can have my own beliefs, my own my own values, know what I want. And、um, for me, that's what I would have told myself back then. So awesome. All right, Jariah. Thanks for being on the podcast.、Um, you can find Jariah on Instagram at Jariah Miller, and Jariah is spelled J E R I A H Miller M I L L E R. Or、uh, the Motivation Minute podcast. You can find it.、Um, I think anywhere podcasts are published, right? <laughs> right. I think so. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for being on the show.、Uh, we'll definitely have to do this again. Thanks for being on. Thank you, Jay. Fifth, appreciate you having me on. It was it was fun. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. I would love if you would leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting platform, as it really does help the show out. You can find me on Instagram at Jay Fifth Mast. That's spelled J A P H E T H M A S T, or my website JayFifthMast dot com. Have an amazing week, and don't forget, make life awesome.